All right, so it looks like we kind of leveled off. We'll um, we'll get going. So I uh, just wanted to uh, say thank you first, uh, everybody, for joining and, and uh, coming on to learn about Centratherm. Uh, my name is Chris Landry. I'm the wholesale sales manager for FIA. Um, wanted to introduce George Carey, who's the vice president of training and education for FIA. He'll be leading the presentation along with Rob Ellis. <clears throat> so. Uh, Rob will be doing kind of a live demo portion. George is going to be uh, doing a, a PowerPoint presentation to go through kind of the product and introduce it. Um, if anybody has any questions at all during the presentation, um, you can go ahead and type them into the chat. We're going to mute everybody. Um, so I will do my best to answer anybody's questions that. Uh, if I don't know the answer, hopefully somebody will. Um, yeah. And if we, we don't, we will get back to you for sure. The, uh, yeah. the testing uh, we're gonna go ahead and mute everybody um, and uh, get started. So without further ado, uh, take it away, George. First of all, thank you very much and welcome everybody. Thank you for spending a little bit of time uh, this afternoon. Uh, hey, how's it powered? Just cross the meridian. Chris, you're gonna mute those calls. Hey, Rich. Hey, you didn't send that, did you? <clears throat> so anyway, presentation this afternoon is on Central Therm, as Chris just mentioned. Unmute myself. I think you can hear me now. I apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> presentation is on, this, on Centratherm, uh, Inaflu uh, polypropylene event gas system. And, and that's kind of a, a theme that we'll probably uh, share with you uh, as we go through this presentation. It is a vent system. It's not just a piece of pipe. It is a system designed very specifically for what it's doing. And so uh, we just wanted to, um, you know, it, it could be a review for some on the line, and it could be uh, maybe an, an introduction, new introduction uh, in terms of a, another material to be used to, to vent the flu products uh, in uh, our various gas appliances, particularly category four. <clears throat> so without further ado, let me get into this. One quick thing, and, and that's what's really probably caught a lot of people, especially in the state of Massachusetts attention, is back in February, uh, the Board of State Examiners of the Plumbers and Gas Fitters voted to amend a particular code, uh, 48 CMR 5.2, to read as follows. Plastic piping, the only plastic piping which may be used for venting appliances shall be CPVC, polypropylene, <clears throat> and other pipes which have been product accepted for that purpose by the board. So if someone comes up with some type of device, they can present it to the board and the board can make a decision and have a vote. But right off the bat, CPVC and polypropylene, polypropylene are the two pipes that have been approved by um, the board for venting gas appliances in Massachusetts. Um, they, the code change that they voted on has been adopted by the Commonwealth, and the only thing we're waiting for is this kind of a technicality. They have to post it on the registry, is the term they use, and that's so that the uh, uh, inspectors throughout the state can then start enforcing this new change. So technically, it's not on the registry as of this morning, uh, but it could be, and it's just momentarily. But the point being, moving forward, water heaters, uh, furnaces, condensing, excuse me, condensing furnaces, condensing boilers will no longer in the state of Massachusetts uh, use uh, or be allowed to use CPVC as a flu gas uh, a venting product. <clears throat> so um, category four, <clears throat> that's all we do. It, it, that's what this Inaflu, and that's the name, is Centratherm is the manufacturer, the name is Inaflu polypropylene vent system. And it's uh, designed, to support the category four gas appliance applications. And, um, and like we've said, it, it is a system. It, it's piping, obviously, it's um, adapters, there's screens, there's termination kits or caps, uh, there's test ports for combustion analyzing, et cetera. 
it, it's a complete system. And it's, it's kind of off as uh, Centotherm, we believe, off as the most complete or the widest breadth of product offering in the polypropylene market here in the United States. Two inch all the way up to 12 inch. Flex, um, flex would be two, three, and four inch as it stands right now. That, that's a possibility that's gonna increase as well. And then obviously concentric uh, uh, fittings, uh, uh, concentric uh, application as well, pipe within a pipe. So just real quickly, Centrotherm, been around about 30 years, represented in over 50 countries in four continents, <clears throat> uh, all over Europe. Uh, and, and as we know, Europe kind of adopted or, or moved to a, a high efficiency appliance and, and, and over there it's all hydronic. So a high efficiency mod con boiler 20, 25 years ago. And they quickly realized uh, the application required a special venting system. And that's where polypropylene and centrotherm popped in and kind of filled a void, if you will. And so they've been doing this for, you know, 25, almost 30 years over there. Back in 2009, <clears throat> um, Centrotherm Ecosystems was formed uh, in April of 2009. And it was to support the North American market. And really what was happening is the heating industry was shifting towards high efficiency appliance. And in Centrotherm's world, originally, they would have been focusing on boilers, which is, if you think about it, we introduced the night boiler, walking by night boiler back in 2005. So four years later, the, the industry had really started to move to, in that direction. The utilities were playing a big part. So Centrotherm as a uh, polypropylene vent uh, system in Europe, looking over to uh, America saying, hey, they're doing the same thing. Let's go support it. And that's what they did. <clears throat> they also quickly realized once they get over here to the North America that there's a tremendous amount of gas efficient gas um, appliance, uh, excuse me, gas furnaces, warm air. You know, it's, it's a bigger portion that makes up the heating, residential heating uh, industry versus boilers. But, you know, so there's a, there's a market for both, as well as obviously uh, high efficiency water heaters, which are in a tremendous amount of homes. So, so they came over, they're out of Albany, New York. They manufacture, they extrude. Um, all of their pipe uh, up to 10 inch, the 12 inch is still being shipped over from Europe. Uh, and they've recently, within the past year, uh, started manufacturing all of their fittings uh, in Albany. So it's not 100% American made, but it's 90, 95, 98% American made. Um, the other thing that, that we you know, appreciate is being in Albany, we're, we're two and a half hours away. So from an inventory standpoint, we have a lot of distributors throughout New England already handling this line. Um, but if we get, we get get in a pinch or some kind of issue or what have you, you know, it's a quick ride over down the Mass Pike up to Albany, uh, you know, to kind of fill any kind of void. So we, we, it's it's a benefit to the New England market. Um, one of the things, one of the first things they did when uh, Centrotherm made that decision and came over with the Interflu product is they went to the governing boards and said, okay. What's the strictest, what's the most stringent standard, venting standard that we can be tested and listed to? And here in the United States, Underwriters Lab has a, a code or a setting called <clears throat> um, UL 1738, and that's what they tested to. So they tested and are now listed at the 1738 standard. Uh, it's first polypropylene uh, manufacturer to achieve that and, and list it that way. Um, engineered specifically for the intended and purpose. All we're saying is the product is made to vent category four applications. And as a testament to why we're sitting here right now, training is absolutely a priority. And, and it's a priority throughout all of you know, the United States for Centrotherm, all of New England for FIA, and then specifically in Massachusetts with this code change, you know, there are a tremendous amount of people that were probably more comfortable and used to use in PVC cutting, gluing, and, and now we're introducing a different uh, methodology. And it's, it's not a bad, it's, it's just different. Very popular in Europe, has been, like I said, for the last 25, almost 30 years. But it could be new to a lot of uh, installers here in, in Massachusetts. So we just want to kind of make you aware of what it is and how simple it is, what a complete line it is, and how simple it is to install. So just a couple of quick comments on 1738. What does it mean? There are two classes and it's based on temperature. There's a class one, which is over 275 and, and less than or not more than 473. And then where Interflu is tested to is class two. Uh, venting systems for gas fire appliances producing flue gas temperatures of 275 degrees or less. 
And, and within that class two, there are actually uh, three categories. There's an A, a B, and a C. And Centrotherm uh, fits in, if you will, on class two, uh, category C, where the temperature is specifically tested up to 302. They refer to that as their softening temperature. <clears throat> but typically, it's, it, the temperature limit is 230 degrees, which more than, you know, uh, is adequate, I guess I could say, for that category four uh, venting uh, application furnaces, water heaters, condensing boilers. And that's what they uh, have applied for and have achieved. And behind the scenes, there were kind of six criteria they had to pass to say, hey, we can be listed as 1738 compliant. Clearance to combustibles on this product is zero clearances. Um, support requirements, it's a little different. <clears throat> um, uh, they may be what you're used to, but they had to pass a uh, deflection. Uh, couldn't exceed more than 1%. They had to uh, withstand an, a nine kilogram or almost a 20 pound impact test, which they did. But in doing so, in, in achieving that, what happens is that the piping is, is supported. The support clamps, we'll get into that in a little bit, every 78 inches in the vertical and every 39 inches in the horizontal to comply with that 1738 listing. Flammability, you get into an application, typically might be commercial and a plenum or what have you, and you have a, a ULC S102.2 uh, criteria, know that uh, Centrotherm uh, meets both the flame spread code, which is basically how fast and how far, and then the uh, smoke developed index measures the concentration. Of smoke. They have achieved that criteria as well. Cold weather impact, temperature cycling down to minus 40 degrees Celsius, which just happens to be minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a very important one right here. Joint requirements, 100 pound pull test. Literally, they'll, uh, UL will, will make a joint, or they'll put the pipe together, make a joint, and they'll hang 100 pounds on that connection to make sure it passes that 100 pound pull test. And then the final one, which we'll spend a little bit of time later on, the uh, UV challenge, uh, aging 180 degree uh, in a UV climate chamber. So Centrotherm's Interflu um, polypropylene has met all six of these criteria. To just know if it's new to you, if you're on this call and you've been used to PVC and you haven't really you know, ventured over to this polypropylene, which is a gasketed system, which we'll spend some time with uh, talking about, know that it's, it meets all the, the most stringent criteria. It's been in Europe, like I said, almost 30 years. Been in the United States here about 11, 2009. We actually have some manufacturers, you know, I, definitely on the boiler side, where they just as an individual manufacturer made a decision, they weren't going to accept PVC on their product. So they've been using poly, you know, for a while. And uh, so it might not be new to some of the guys, but to others, it might be a, a, a new technique or new application. One quick thing I want to point out here, this isn't a, a us against them type of thing. I just want to point out, if you're thinking of, you're making a decision, you're, you're wrestling with it, I just want you to compare the weight and how that might relate to labor. So a three inch piece of pipe is 0.3 pounds. If I bought a 10 foot stick, which uh, Centrotherm offers, it's three pounds. <clears throat> if I bought a 10 foot stick of CPVC, which has been around forever, it's 20 pounds. Conversely, if you got into maybe a commercial application and you're looking at maybe a 10 inch diameter piece of pipe, it's 20 pounds if I bought a 10 foot stick of a 10 inch pipe. If I bought that same 10 foot stick in CPVC, it's 130 pounds. So just from a, thinking about the labor and the installation and how hard or how easy it is, um, th there's a difference. <clears throat> so why Interflu? And again, I kind of uh, mentioned it at the beginning, it is a complete venting system. They break it up into two categories, residential, which is two, three, and four inch. And then single wall commercial is six, eight, 10, and 12 inch. And then I mentioned earlier the flex, it's two, three, and four inch diameter at the moment. But, but more importantly is in addition to the pipe itself is all these other components, accessories, et cetera, to truly build a uh, UL 1738 a, a listed gas venting system for a category four appliance. Another thing that they did in addition to getting that most stringent testing or listing with 1738 is they went after almost all of the boiler manufacturers, the water heater manufacturers, they're at 95, 96% of the furnace manufacturers at the moment. So they've all been tested and approved uh, for this category four market share. 
And the, the, the comment here or the, the takeaway, I guess if, I, if, if you take something away from this presentation is on their website, they have this uh, matrix link, OEM matrix link. And it's like, I, I keep using the same expression, but it's a living, breathing document. And it lists out every manufacturer of a furnace, a water heater and a boiler, very specific, the model numbers of those appliances. And then uh, give you a quick example. And this is just a screenshot I uh, was taken actually last week. I think it's every two weeks, it's either one or two weeks, this thing gets, a, uh, gets updated. So it's constantly adding new product uh, as it comes available, as it comes online. And, and the takeaway here would be this, right over here. What is my adapter? Do I need an appliance adapter? And if I do, what's the part number? What's the model number? Do I need one on the air intake? Uh, and, and so for every furnace, every water heater, every uh, boiler manufacturer that's been approved, they list it here. So it's a very useful uh, page because when you get into it, when you think about it, as you move from that appliance to this Innoflu product, the most important piece is that adapter, that appliance adapter. You're transitioning from the PVC, CPVC, or stainless steel, whatever the manufacturer uses, and you're transitioning to this Innoflu Centrotherm product you need, you know, this is, this is very important. So for all of the various wholesalers out there, depending upon what furnace line, what water heater line, what boiler line you use, this is a very useful tool. So get into the product a little bit. <clears throat> Residential again, two, three, four, commercial six, eight, 10, and 12. Effective lengths. What they're referring to on that is this. It's a gasketed system. So we have this, we refer to it as the female end of this pipe. We have a male end, we have a female end that houses the gasket. <clears throat> and that gasket is, is, is housed, if you will, in this hub or this bell. And there's a little uh, gasket bead right here. And the gasket sits inside here. We'll talk a little bit about it, but it's very important. It's a directional gasket. It can only be installed one way. It's not by. But the effective length is this. <clears throat> Say this was a, um, a one foot piece of pipe. If you put a tape measure and go from one end to the other, it's basically almost 16 inches. They give you, or they give us, an additional four inches of uh, pipe in the manufacturing process. But that hub right there is also designed to receive that fitting or that other piece of pipe that's gonna slide into that hub, that female end. So the effective length truly is you know, what it is in, in, in length of feet, but there's an additional four inches to house the, 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 uh, the male uh, partner, if you will, that's gonna um, complete or connect that venting system. Another thing to mention is just pitch. <clears throat> the vent system must be pitched uh, on a residential product, uh, no less than a quarter inch per foot back to the appliance. We want any of that condensate that's in that flue pipe to drain back to the appliance, get through the heat exchanger and come out through the condensate, pump, condensate drain. And then the only other comment to make here is these patented connector rings. We'll spend a little bit of time, but it's this little device right over here. It's a connector ring. And to meet that UL1738 and even the Canadian ULC S636, we need that connector ring on those smaller residential joints to, to maintain or to uh, make that 100 pound pull test. Another thing is um, different uh, lengths of pipe. One, two, three, six, and 10. We're the only ones, the only polypropylene uh, manufacturer at the moment that offers a 10 footer. Now, this is where I just want to comment on that. <clears throat> As you cut the pipe, after you determine what length you need and you cut it, the residual piece of pipe is no longer usable. You can't, you know, because we're not, we're not gluing the stuff. This is all gasketed. So this is kind of the business end of the pipe. This is the, this is the, ball, the bell or the hub that houses the gasket. This is where the connection is gonna be made. So the only, thing, the only reason I'm saying all of this is when you're, if this is all new to you and you're laying out a system, um, maybe you don't buy five 10 foot sticks. And then in one application, one particular situation, you're cutting off five or six feet. Maybe you buy a couple of six, <laughs> a couple of threes or twos or what have you because they come one, two, three, six, and 10 foot. So <clears throat> maybe a little bit of a piece of paper and a pencil when you're in that mechanical room and you're saying, how am I gonna vent this um, products of combustion out of this space? What do I need? So, I, uh, and the point of this is just to try to minimize your waste. We don't want you wasting anything or minimize the amount of waste. 
And then lastly, it is directional, that gasket. Um, and, and it's there to ensure an airtight seal. I've been doing it, like I said, for almost 30 years. In addition to the pipe, obviously there's elbows. Um, and in fact, their 90s really are 87s. And they do that intentionally to kind of create that pitch back to the appliance. So they start it right at the very beginning. It's already a built-in pitch, as well as 45s, 30s, and 15s. Adapters, like we mentioned on that um, uh, the matrix, the OEM matrix, we have adapters, whether they're for stainless steel, whether they're for PVC, concentric, some of the manufacturers might offer a two pipe and they want to convert it to concentric, or they come off the, the appliance uh, as concentric and then you're going to convert it to two pipe, an air intake and a, and a vent, flue gas a vent pipe. <clears throat> And here's the concentric. Uh, some of the, uh, you know, again, back to that, it's a system. One of the, probably one of the first pieces that you're gonna install after your appliance adapter is probably this guy right here, this test port uh, fitting. <clears throat> the last thing you wanna do is be uh, cutting a hole into polypropylene pipe to, to put your analyzer in to do your combustion testing and combustion numbers. So they actually offer a, a fitting here that has a test port with a cap so you can take it off Put your, uh, your probe in, do your analyzing, you're done, put the cap back on, you're good to go. It's an airtight seal, as well as some of these other drains, T caps with drains, horizontal drain tees. Accessories, uh, this is, is back to that support that we talked about. Every 78 inches on the vertical, every 39 on the horizontal, they offer a, a, a product, a support clamp. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Obviously, bird screens. Spacers, when you get into a vertical pipe, whether it be uh, flexi and or rigid, and you're going in a chase, <clears throat> they're gonna want to see spacers every 78 inches. And that's just to keep the pipe off the wall. That's its only purpose. And then lastly here, here's kind of the, a little bit of the magic sauce, but it's called center serum, and it's a water-based lubricant. And it's what we use to put the, the male fitting in and slide past that gasketed, female portion of that, that hub of that, bulb, that bulb, a bell, I should say. That's how you make that joint. And it make, just makes it very easy. Don't need to use a lot. As we move, move out past this PowerPoint, we get into the live demonstration that Rob's gonna do very shortly. Um, <clears throat> you'll see when he puts a fitting together, you don't need a lot of this, it's very little actually. <clears throat> Some terminations, uh, just a quick comment on the terminations. You'll notice that they're all in black. And sometimes in, in uh, various presentations, the question comes up, you know, gray, black, you said UV uh, rating on the UL 1738. That's all true. All the gray pipe uh, is approved and, and meets the standards to, to the, the criteria for 1738. What they realize, though, is when you're talking termination, so you're outside, you're facing Mother Nature, you're facing sun, wind, rain, snow, sleet, etc., especially here in New England. It's a very um, rough environment. And so from a, a longevity standpoint, they realized <clears throat> that by just, uh, what they did is they loaded in some additional carbon black colorant that just makes the, the, the poly uh, more, uh, it, it can withstand the elements. It's not to say the gray can't, it can, but from a longevity, how much one's gonna last longer than the other. They both meet the UL standard, the 1738 standard. But the black, just from a, um, a, like I said, I keep hopping on it, but longevity. As well as, I guess, you know, maybe doing some type of feedback, there's um, an aesthetic component to it where they, maybe they prefer the, the homeowner, the client, the architect, whoever, the engineer, prefers that black uh, L, uh, termination unit outside as opposed to the gray. But inside the house, the gray, you know, obviously it's, it's barely seeing any sunlight anyways, but it, it, they both pass, the black is, is why, and that's why I just want to hop on it with the termination kits. Same thing on the caps, the covers, chimney and bevet. So real quickly, what are we doing? You have a piece of pipe, you're gonna say, hey, I measured it, I need to cut it, okay, I'm gonna take a hacksaw or sawzall, I wanna make a nice perpendicular straight up and down cut, I'm gonna have some burrs, so I wanna deburr it. When the pipe, pipe is manufactured, there is some, there's a chamfered end, but you don't necessarily need that, so when you cut it, you don't have to chamfer the end, you just have to deburr it, make sure you get all of those burrs out of there, so that when you go to make this connection, there's not some rough, you know, sharp edges that are gonna affect the integrity of that gasket right here. 
So literally you, you deburr it, you put your connector ring on the male end, you put a little bit of that center serum lubricant, the, the, the water base, and you're gonna slide it into that bell. <clears throat> As you do that, I just wanna point out, this is just a screenshot, a snapshot of uh, the installation manual. And <clears throat> what it's saying here is, um, when you measure, you know, what you wanna do is measure the depth of that female socket. So you're gonna take a ruler or tape measure, you're gonna measure it. You're gonna mark the male end of each component just shy, which when they say just shy, what they mean is a quarter inch of the depth of that female socket. A couple of steps you're gonna do when you're putting this thing together. When you finally slide the, the, the pipe together, the pipes together, I should say, you're gonna push and twist that male end until properly seated in component one, which is the female end of the, the, the hub, if you will, and you wanna align the mark with the top of the female end. This, this, this system, this gasketed system, um, is designed to accept expansion and contraction. When you heat this pipe, there's gonna be a, a, a push, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of expansion. This, this method that we just talked about is how we uh, accept that expansion and contraction while still maintaining the integrity of that gasketed airtight uh, seal or system. Hey, George. Yes. Question. Yeah, this is all great. The only thing is, I have no idea which way the gas flow is supposed to be going. Which way is the, which way is the flue gas is going? I will, uh, I will share that with you very, very shortly. That's a great question. Okay. All right. <clears throat> what, 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 getting to the gasket end itself, the directional gasket. What we're trying to show here is the male end is entering into this hub or this bulb, bulb bell, if you will. It slides past that properly inserted gasket and it seats just about a quarter inch shy of the, the bottoming it out. If every fitting and every piece of pipe comes with a gasket already installed. Uh, if for some reason, you know, there was a problem, there's an issue, it's missing, it's, it's damaged, you can replace it. They have, we have replacement gaskets. The point of this picture right here is don't put it in in this orientation. If you did, as you were sliding the pipe in, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna catch that gasket and you're gonna dislodge it, affect its integrity, et cetera. It's truly a directional. It can only be installed one way. And it's gonna be the male pipe sliding past that gasket. So technically, in, in normal application, the gasket's not even really seeing the condensate. It's forming and it's draining back. So from a directional standpoint, the condensate would be draining back towards the appliance in this direction here. <clears throat> the connector rings. Um, on a smaller a residential size, two, three, and four inch, they are required for that UL 1738 listing. Um, it slides around the male end of the pipe and then it clips or snaps on to the female end of the, the, the gasket bead. Rob will show us in a live demonstration very shortly. Um, <clears throat> it didn't require it on the larger diameter pipe, but we, as a belt and suspenders type approach, we recommend installing these connector rings on all pipe, six, eight, 10, 12, as well as the smaller. Um, <clears throat> this is a kind of a silly little picture, but it, it when you look at it and when it's installed, it looks like it's cockeyed. It looks like it's not sitting properly. And so this was just a little Chinese fingers tra uh, trap. And it's just showing you when you put that on your fingers initially, it's pretty loose and you're like, what's this all about? But as soon as you start to pull your fingers apart, and the same thing is that as that vent system starts to expand, uh, a combination of the gasket as well as this connector ring uh, kind of has almost like a bite. And, and another person gave me an analogy, almost like an anchor when it sets. Drop the anchor down, the rope is kind of loose, all of a sudden the tide starts to move or the wave or whatever, the boat, and bang, that anchor sets. It's the same thing happening here on this joint. Uh, support clamps, uh, every 79 inch, excuse me, every 78 inches on the vertical and every 39 inches on the horizontal. That's very specific, again, to meet that deflection test that's part of the 1738 requirement. And I'm not knocking clevis hangers or anything like that at all. I'm saying is that does not meet this. We need something that's gonna be firm and snug around the pipe, not just letting it hang in that clevis hanger. <clears throat> and again, the two, three, and four inch, we're looking for a quarter inch pitch. And the uh, six, eight, 10, and 12 inch diameter, we're looking for a five eighths pitch back to the appliance. So I guess maybe as a quick answer, what's my directional flow? 
the male is inserting into the female, so the condensate's draining in this direction here back to the appliance, and conversely, the flue gases are moving in this direction out to the termination kit or termination unit. So appliance down here, flue gases are moving this way. Condensate forming, draining back to the appliance this way. And the way that male piece of pipe slides into that hub or that female end, and it goes past the gasket, the gasket doesn't even really see, doesn't get in, come in contact with the, with the condensate. Uh, another uh, product that has become very popular over the last X number, uh, almost uh, 10 years, is the Flex. It's just an easy way of maybe upgrading a mid-efficiency appliance that had a chimney and or B vent, and we're upgrading it to a high efficiency that's a category four. We can use this polypropylene, we can drop it down or pull it up through from the base. Typically, most guys, I think, drop it down, uh, down the chimney and use that as a chase for this, for this polypropylene pipe. So it comes in, um, uh, can be offset up to 45 degrees. We definitely don't want to run this on the horizontal. All of those corrugations that are on the outside are also on the inside. The last thing we want is the puddling or pooling of condensate in this pipe. So we definitely want it to be vertical, but we can handle some offsets up to 45 degrees. The three inch and the four inch, they come with an integrated coupler that is every three feet. There's a solid piece of pipe, the two inch, we actually have an adapter, a flex to rigid adapter that is used before we get into our base unit. Uh, and they come in different coil lengths. <clears throat> and like I said, must be installed uh, in the vertical, typically masonry chimneys, B vent, maybe a gypsum chase. chase. Uh, here's just a quick example, either a straight shot right here on the right hand side, or maybe a couple of offsets, uh, 45 degrees or less. <clears throat> What's supporting this, what supports this is this guy right down here. We got a base support sitting down on a, almost like a piece of strut that's got a, uh, an end of it that's tapped into one side of the chimney. The other side is sitting on the, on the resting on the wall, if you will, of the chimney, the brick. <clears throat> and it's solid. So if the horizontal, horizontal connection to the appliance is always going to be rigid pipe. The flex is the vertical. Here we're highlighting the spacers every 78 inches. We're going to snap on a spacer just to keep this pipe from bumping up against the wall. And then the other part of that support mechanism is the cap, the chimney cover right here. So between the chimney cover and the base support, they're responsible for supporting this length of pipe. The spacers have no responsibility for support other than keeping them off the wall. <clears throat> and like I said, for three and four inch, you know, you're going to cut it. Um, where that solid piece of pipe is every three feet on the on the two inch flex uh, they do not offer that so what you're going to do is you're going to cut it uh, in between the corrugated grooves and then you're going to add this um, uh, adapter and then you're going to connect to your base support at the base at the bottom and again i'm just kind of saying the same thing um, one comment to make is when you're running this either dropping it down or, or pulling it up from the base Whatever it takes in distance to get to the top of the chimney, installation practice says, hey, add an additional two feet, uh, just so you can do what this picture is trying to describe. You're adding a chimney cap at the base of it. You're gonna add a ring. Uh, we'll talk about that. Rob's got a pretty good demonstration. And you're gonna cut off the residual piece of flex. You're gonna have this end pipe, end piece here, then you're gonna snap on the cap and you're done. So again, they say it right in the installation manual when measuring, just added two feet just to give yourself some play to be able to, to build the whole system. And again, like we've said, it is a system. It's a venting system. Uh, one other thing is and instead of a chimney, maybe have a B vent. Well, they offer a B vent cap. Same thing. B, uh, the flexies inside the B vents, kind of a blow up picture right here. But instead of having a, that, uh, that base support sitting on a unistrut, maybe it's on this uh, base support that can be uh, uh, screwed or nailed to say some the um, some pieces of wood down here in the basement, the, the uh, in between the, the, the joints. So. <clears throat> and again, same thing, same comment. It's all in the installation manual. Um, you got a flex end pipe that's at the very top that's going to sit into the B vent or the chimney cap. You have this vertical run base support. So vertical is my flexi, my horizontal hard rigid pipe is going to uh, uh, enter into the uh, appliance itself. These are those spaces every 78 inches, and here's that base support if you can maybe be able to, let's say, a B vent instead of a, uh, a chimney. A couple quick pictures 
just showing some installations. Uh, in this one case here, maybe it was a, a mid-efficiency appliance, you know, obviously large, probably massive boiler that gets replaced with X number of smaller, uh, high efficiency mod con boilers perhaps. And they're gonna use that B vent chase and run up a bunch of flexi uh, to, to vent the products. Uh, they offer kits, which is very convenient. So they offer um, two different kits when they refer to it. One is a uh, coil kit, and it comes in different lengths of, of the two and three inch or the four inch. And then the component kit, which consists of the spacers, the connectors, the base support, the center servant. Whether it's a B vent, it's gonna have this type of base support. If it's a chimney, it's gonna have this type of uh, base support. But it offers the, everything in the kit, and the spacers are there based on a, a length of 50 feet. So it gives you enough spacers. <clears throat> One other product that they've recently introduced is called Blitz. And it has to do nothing with venting flue gases, but rather for air intake. <clears throat> so it, it's not a polypropylene. It, it's a polyethylene, I believe, is the, is the makeup of the chemical. And it's designed to have all, no joint connections other than the termination. Where, where it connects, and then also obviously with appliance adapter where it connects to the, the appliance, but it's a straight shot. Only two SKUs, the coil itself, and then the termination kit, which comes with a bird screen, 45, an adapter, and a, um, a piece of pipe. <clears throat> uh, this is kind of what I think uh, Centrotherm is envisioning as it might become a popular application. Is We're showing here a B vent that's supporting uh, the flue gases, so I got my flexi with my end pipe, flex end pipe right here, discharge of the flue gases. But the way this cap sits, there's an opening here. And so I actually have enough clearance where I can bring in makeup air onto and through that flex blit, blitz, flex pipe air intake down to the appliance. On their website, they actually have a really nice uh, white paper talking about this very specific subject. So I suggest if you have any interest, it'd be worthwhile to, to click on it and read it. Uh, Kevin Shaw, who's the engineering manager for uh, uh, Centrotherm, uh, wrote the, the white paper, very informative. Uh, one other thing that um, uh, Centrotherm offers is VentGong. They have this um, layout design, this software. And you can basically take a, a hand sketched, and, and I guess I just want to point out this right here, a basic sketch with accurate dimensions, and that's the key. As long as we have accurate dimensions, can be turned into what BOM stands for is a bill of materials, a 2D schematic, a 3D design drawing, as well as a, a, a price quote. Uh, here's, here's kind of a quick example. We did something uh, just last week with Centrotherm, and they'll give us a list uh, with a, a pricing. They'll give us a uh, order of install, all the material that's needed. They'll give you a 2D schematic, and they'll give us a 3D you know, final design. So it's a very useful software. It's available for residential, commercial, single boiler, multiple boilers. Here they happen to be showing maybe like a common vent example, but it could be just a couple of commercial boilers, a couple of residential boilers. It could be whatever the application is. It's very useful software to really give you everything you need to, to build that vent system. <clears throat> again, just uh, making you aware again on that OEM uh, matrix that exists on the on the website. It's a very useful tool. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to pull Rob Ellis back into the presentation. And Rob's going to take us live uh, to his um, office where he's got some um, uh, uh, show and tell, if you will. He's got some samples that we're going to kind of review what we just talked about. Thanks, George. And um, you there. Yep. yep. And so what we're going to do, we're going to talk about some of the assemblies, a couple of questions that, that came up in the chat. We're going to uh, address them. Um, so a couple of things that I saw came up. Uh, one of them is the parallel flues with a wood, wood, wood fireplace and, and centrotherm in one. So just to clarify, you can't put the centrotherm in the same flue with a wood burning. Um, when you're in an adjoining, uh, chimney, what you will have to look at is not so much on a centrotherm thing, but that may fall to the local code. We have seen some inspectors that are like, hey, I'm concerned about whether it's a chimney fire or whatever. So always clarify that with the local inspector. From a centrotherm point of view, they're not going to have a high enough uh, temperature in, in that space if there, there's a concern of that. Um, but I also want to touch back to the code change. I see there's some questions. So 
the way the code change took place here in the Commonwealth um, is Massachusetts adopts NFPA 54 as their venting guidelines within 248 CMR, which is the Massachusetts code. Now, what they do is they go and make amendments to it. So back in about 2014, they had made an amendment that said the plastic piping section of NFPA 54, plastic pipe had to be explicitly allowed by a boiler manufacturer. So here in 2020, what they did is they clarified again, they made it an additional amendment. And now it says that basically PVC, uh, CPVC polypropylene or an approved product can be used um, to vent an appliance. It's no longer based on what the manufacturer said. So if it's not one of those, basically CPVC polypropylene, um, the answer is going to be no, unless it's been product received product approval from the Commonwealth. A little bit of confusion, but that's what they did to clarify it. So um, that, let's, let's get into kind of putting some of this stuff together. Um, I want to start with, you need an appliance adapter. And so what's, what's, what's important is what you start with. Now, some of the appliances now, Lock and Var being one of them, ships their boilers with a polypropylene adapter right on it. Um, I have here a Giannone style heat exchanger, um, and this would require an appliance adapter. So it's a stainless steel collar with a gasket in it. Um, normally when you were installing this, you would put a CPVC starter piece and you do a coupling and you would transition to PVC or you would continue out in CPVC. That was, that was kind of how these have been put in for years. And now as we transition to, you know, polypropylene, we have to make that adjustment. So there's really two appliance adapters that are out there. There's a non-gasketed and a gasketed. The part numbers, and I don't know if Centrotherm, you know, kind of put this in. It's really sort of my interpretation, but this is an ISAA. This is an ISAG. ISAG's got a gasket on it. An ISAA, the gasket's absent. Helps me to remember that. So basically, you're going to start off your appliance assembly or your venting by putting your appliance adapter in. At that point in time, you now can go with your polypropylene. So in this case, I'm just gonna use a 90. And George talked about the Centra, Centra CERN uh, lubricant that we use. Now he said to use just a little bit, but for the next part of what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna kind of go a little extra on here. Um, we're kind of gonna demonstrate really what that locking ring does and, and kind of the pur purpose of it. So just so you know, the more Centra CERN you, you use, really the longer it'll take to set up it's also helpful because I have to take this apart when I'm done, so I could do it again later. So you snap your, uh, your ring on, and you'll see the ring sits there at a, at a bit of an angle. Um, we referred to that as, you know, whether the Chinese finger trap or the anchor. If I go to pull that out, what's catching it right now, because I've got it real well lubed up, is actually that clip. So it can't, it can't back out. You know, and it, this is granted belt and suspenders, but you know, have a uh, have a bad igniter and backfire inside of a you know a gas appliance. We've now got something extra that's really going to take a lot of that on there. Once that centrist learn sets up, that thing doesn't really come apart either. So uh, yeah, it sets it sets up pretty good. And you know, I do these every week, and then I have to take the, them apart. If I'm smart, I'll do it right at the end. If I wait, like I did today. Um, I spent quite a bit of time this morning kind of pulling that apart. All right. So from here, it's what are you doing next? Now, on, on this particular heat exchanger, I do have a flue gas port. And yes, I do have it upside down, but it sits, sits nicely this way. Now, if I were going to put a flue test port, that might be my next fitting. And then I'm going to start building fittings from there going out. Now, the question was asked, what about direction of flow? So direction of flow. The flue gases are coming up this direction through the hub and out. And that really allows the condensate as it drains back and everything to kind of be protected. What we're doing is we're creating this four inch kind of protective space for that gasket. Even though we have a gasket that's made to, to sit in that um, and, and it's not affected by it, but it's still just creating that spot and really gives us a lot of extra safety as far as keeping flue gases within there. They are marked. I know Mike put that into the uh, the chat, but there is a directional error on it that's marked. 
and last week somebody asked about are they tagged and yes they're tagged with ul 1738 and ulc 636 you're going to find that on there now once we begin to move out and we we build our vent system that's where we're going to start talking about the securing brackets okay so this is the, this is the centrotherm model and really what's important is that it attaches um that it's, a, that it's a rigid attachment point, that the pipe doesn't slide in and out of there, that we're gonna secure it. So almost think more securing, less supporting, if you will. And it's that 39 inches on the horizontal, and it's gonna be 78 inches when I go vertical. And if you wonder where that came from, that's one meter and two meters. So with a parent European company, and that's where all this stuff started from, that's where we get 39 inches and 78 inches. I personally thought it was a little strange that those were the numbers they picked. So as I build the cross, again, 39, 78, as I move out and around, just drop this guy out of the way here. So as we've moved across, now we gotta talk about terminating. So a couple of things with, with terminating is, how am I gonna get out of the building? I've made it to the wall, am I gonna go up the chimney? Am I gonna go straight out the sidewall? What am I gonna do, do now? So there's a couple of options when we get to that. And let's really talk about that flexible liner option um, to start with. So the flexible liner option, and George talked about it, we pull that, uh, that up through the roof. We're gonna set our chimney up in place there. Get our chimney secured along there. And we're gonna run our flexible liner up through. And like George was saying, we're gonna leave a couple of feet hanging out, leave like two feet above, well, you really leave that two feet above where you terminate. So you've got this stuff to work with. Now, before you set it here, do yourself a favor and set it down here. And why is that? Well, the reason really is, is at the bottom, I have to land on a hub. At the top, I really gotta be somewhere in the slinky part of it and in the, in the grooved fittings. But if I set the top and when I get to the bottom, I'm not on this part, this hub, I'm gonna have a problem. So the way that sets up, we're gonna talk about, you know, we've gone through a chimney, just a, an existing brick chimney. I've drilled a hole here, insert that in, and I set that part in. Now, I set my base right here. And that's job is really just, everything's gonna sit on it. I've got my chimney liner in. Question comes up from time, should you go up or should you come down? My personal thing is come down the chimney. If you're coming down the chimney and you knock a piece of mortar or, or brick loose, it's just gonna continue down to the bottom. But if I'm pulling up in this direction and I knock something loose above it, it can certainly end up inside of my flexible liner. And I've had that happen to me in the past. So, and it really sucks to then go and find it and we were using a stainless steel liner and we actually got some insulation in. So it was a real pain in the, uh, in the backside to find that later. So that's why I recommend come down with it. Now, when you come down with it, you're gonna set it up just exactly what we just did a minute ago. Got my base. Put my centrocern on there. insert it in and snap the clip. It's that easy. Now at this point in time down here, theoretically, we've probably run all the way across this way with our hard pipe and we're gonna connect here. Question comes up from time to time. Can I transition to, you know, whatever, whatever product? We'll probably see less and less of that now that, you know, PVC is not an allowed device here in the Commonwealth, but, um, Although I don't know that we sometimes acknowledge it here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, there are actually 49 other states uh, in the country. Um, you can't transition to another product. The NFPA says you cannot mix vent systems. So if you're in polypropylene here, you're going to continue in polypropylene. In fact, if you're in central therm, you're going to continue in central therm, whatever that is. So there's no system mixing along the way. You got to stay with whatever you did. So there's kind of that connection. Now, when I come up through the top, and you guys all see this, this fitting that I have here, this is the fitting that sets everything kind of up at the top of the, uh, of the wall when we get there. 
And let me just kind of pop it off of here so you guys can see that and see kind of how easy it's going to go together when you get there. And I'm going to kind of move around the front because I really want you guys to see this ring and how that works. So a couple of things to really notice on the on the chimney cap and I'm going to slide this camera just a little bit so you can see it. If you look over my shoulder there, what you're seeing is the blitz flex and the centrotherm liner together, the Inaflu liner up there. Now the way that that's working is the liner itself, the exhaust liner is coming right up here through the center. The blue blitz flex, flex is staying underneath, but I can get my air intake around here and around that cap. So that's why that's done that way. Now, if we had done everything correctly, when we put it together, and I've got my chimney cap here. So this ring, I'm gonna thread on to the end of my liner, and you'll notice that there's a tab right there. So once that's on, and I set it in place with my liner, this is kind of my finish piece, if you will, and it's what's gonna stick up through there. And what I'm gonna do, and now kind of almost becomes a one-handed operation, and I just, Screw it right on top of it. Then you're going to take your chimney cap and you're going to pop it on and it's done and it's finished. And underneath there, you got your air intake and you've got your exhaust coming out through the top. Now, as you were doing that and running that up there through, every 78 inches, you were adding a spacer, you know, the little spider spacers to keep them off of the walls. And that's this guy's right here. And that's really its job. It's just to kind of keep it there. I'm not supporting it. I'm just moving it out um, off the walls, keeping it from running into anything. Anything like that is what we want to do. That's its job. The weight of the liner and everything else is actually supported right down here in that base that we did. So that's where the weight supported there. And at the top, in the middle, I'm just keeping it from from rocking around, I'm keeping it centered in there. If hey, you're not Rob, in a chim chimney. One, one quick thing to point out on the flex is, is the total equivalent length of a foot of flex is not one foot because of the corrugated inner wall. Right, and that's why we'll see people at times kind of do it this way. You know, sometimes why would you run, you know, straight pipe up the chimney? Because the flex is a two for one. So every foot of flex is two feet of flex of straight pipe. And if I'm in that scenario and I really, that's the way I have to do, I can run the straight, the rigid pipe. I can run the bigger sizes of it. I can support them down at the bottom, the same, same scenario. And then I'm just going to, um, again, still use those spider uh, spacers all the way up as we go up through. Now, if you're not in a chimney and you're just coming, you got a chase or whatever, this is your guy right here. And this allows you to hook it to two, you know, floor joist, if you will, and set it on there. So if you're sidewall exhausting, you actually gotta get a couple of talks. And as I use exhausting, I think sometimes listening to me talk can be exhausting. Uh, but, you know, that's on you guys, not as much on, on me. So there's a question I see right up there. Um, mixing systems, does that include the air intake? So I could use a PVC air intake and a centrotherm exhaust, and we have a fitting for that. And basically we have this cool plate right here. Now, if I were using a, you know, Diversitech makes a lot of those uh, termination kits that come with your boiler, your furnace, whatever. And that's what this is made for. This is designed to fit into that bay vent style kit um, right here, and I sandwich it and wedge it. I'm gonna get a nice rigid seal. It's gasketed because I'm really going into a PVC coupling or a CPVC coupling. And then on this side right here, that's sized to just let three inch PVC come through to be my air intake. So I've got that option there. If both sides of what I'm doing are gonna be polypropylene, you know, here's my, <clears throat> my option here. I got a couple of different ways that it can go through, whether it's gonna connect on the back um, whether it's going to come straight through and then really I have my adapters uh, and also they're going to work here as to you know so it's kind of a universal fit where I can come through that direction 
I can hit it on this end. So you can set it up however you want to in the field. That's the termination kit. It gives you a lot of flexibility kind of as you're doing that. And one of the, one of the last things I really want to like, I guess, point out and, and kind of hammer home that's important. And that is really, and I got to switch cameras here for just a, a second, showing you how that fitting should look and how that clip should go. And somewhere down here, I have a way to switch my, my camera. So if you guys just give me a second to find it, there she is. Oh, there it is. Perfect. So although this technically, when you're going to look at it, might look wrong to somebody, that is the way that that should set. And again, it's to keep it from being able to pull back against it. It sets like a, like an anchor, if you will. And that's how those, those clips should go. And really you're going to have this side of it. It's going to hold it off. And this side's going to catch. So it tried to pull back or anything went on, I can't go anywhere. And that's really the design of that, of that system. And one last thing that I really want to get into, and you know, unfortunately they told you that the pipe wasn't that heavy, so it's not as impressive me hefting around the six inch piece of polypropylene. But the gasket itself, it is a directional gasket. It is a single directional gasket, only goes one way. So as you look in here, it's, it's tapered, I guess, if you will, to allow that, that male end of the pipe to fit in here. If I take it out and, and show you, it's not tapered on this other end. It's almost flat. And that if I put this gasket in wrong, I'm not going to be able to stick the pipe in through there. Um, so it is a one-way only um, gasket is the way that that's going to work. And let me just switch this guy over here. There we go. Um, so, um, Jim, I see you questioning there. Are the things, are the PVC things and vents that are in the field that are now PVC? So that'll be guidance coming from the Mass Plumbing Board. As a general rule of thumb, things that are in there are grandfathered in and they don't become, you know, retroactive as, as far as a wholesale, hey, you got to change all your venting now. So we don't foresee that. But again, that's going to be from the... Um, the inspectors as to how that's gonna gonna go from there and we let them deal with that and just want to make sure that I got all the any other questions that I just want to jump through a couple of these real quick and just make sure um, <clears throat> so one of the things is snorkeling outside you know not a problem with that and that's definitely clips are awesome out there um, where we have a thing where that could get wet because I have a water-based lubricant, and if I add water back to it, I can take it apart. So that's why we put water in some from the outside sometimes to be able to take that back apart. Um, again, everything's going to be, as, as far as what you can use, again, you're looking at the local jurisdiction as to what that's going to be. I, th I think we got the chimneys questions, the two chimneys. There's one here, this came up the other day, you know, wrapping it. Um, so it is, it's designed to be able to be fire wrapped or wrapped, you know, as far as insulated things. So those things are allowed a little different from what we've seen in the past. I think there was a question last week about painting it. And yes, there are directions and it can be painted um, when it's outside. There are directions for that. Make sure they kind of got all everybody's questions as we're, as we're looking for through here. And just really to make sure that everybody's clear, you know, as Massachusetts works through clarifying their position on it, right now what they've just basically said is you can use polypropylene, you can use CPVC, or you can use anything that was received a product approval from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And that's where they are. Anything more than that from us is just us trying to, you know, speculate on on where it's gonna go. And everybody knows how speculation kind of works lately. Um, uh, any, any other questions? Nothing, look at that. We seem good, Rob. We, we moved, uh, moved right along today. Um, That's what we did. So we hit it, nailed it right at one o'clock. Um, Perfect. If nobody's got any other 
uh, other questions, then I think we. Uh, we'll email everybody. Yeah, we're going to email everybody. I get a, 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 we set up a Dropbox link. So if you're not Dropbox uh, familiar, we're going to send you a link within that link. Um, or that folder are a bunch of other links. The reason we do that is it allows us to kind of update things. So in there, there's gonna be a link to the OEM um, matrix. Um, I just saw Roger, um, no, no screws outside. Um, we don't ever wanna screw into this. So it's always those locking rings. Um, just saw that popped up there real quick. But it also gonna allow us to update that Dropbox folder from time to time. So if you, if you keep that and, and you check back with it, if there's a new INO manual, if there's anything like that, we'll, we will put them in there and you'll get them automatically. Uh, there will also be a, um, a downloadable certificate. You can put your name in it. You can put your friend's name in it. You could <laughs> do whatever you want with it. Uh, Tom, I want to make sure I'm getting your question. Is there any certification required for this application? Is that like to install it? Is that kind of your question? Is there a certification required to install the product? Yes. And there is, there's, there's not. Um, so there's not a, uh, there's not a specific, you know, certification that's required to install it. We kind of wished everybody would take some training and, and learn. It's one of our concerns right now, you know, manufacturers rep or the manufacturer, if people aren't installing it properly and it leads to problems. So any of your friends that want to take a training, you, you can see it's kind of almost painless. Um, we can make it a little more painful. <laughs> um, but that's it. Just making sure everybody's kind of comfortable um, with that. Uh, anybody else? Then I think we've uh, covered it. I think we've covered it. I think we got it. All right. All right. And and as I go through later, if I look through the chat, if we missed anything, we'll we'll certainly get it answered and get it sent to you. So hopefully we got everybody's questions answered. All right. <clears throat> Thank you everybody for their time this, this afternoon. We really appreciate it, everyone from FIA appreciates the, the time you guys put into this. So thank you, Rob, right. you did a great job. Thanks guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you, you guys did a great job. Thanks, thank you. Bye.